It's well known that when we get sick, when we have an infection, we develop a number of stereotypical behaviors that we collectively refer to as sickness-induced behaviors. And these include behaviors such as anorexia or the loss of appetite, a disruption in sleep, changes in our grooming pattern, and we wanted to know what the function of these sickness-induced behaviors were in our ability to fight an infection. What we found was that in, in a series of studies where we infected animals with Salmonella typhi merium, which causes a typhoid-like disease in animals, if we fed animals so that we can override the anorexic response, the animals actually survived the infection. And if we nutritionally restricted animals during the infection, that they actually fared worse. But what was really surprising to us was that it wasn't the host defense response to the infection that was changing. What we found was a strategy that the salmonella actually employs during infection to block this anorexic response, to actually prevent it from causing disease in the host, so it was promoting survival of the host during the infection and it was also increasing its transmission to new hosts. In the intestine, the bacteria, the salmonella, inhibits a specific cytokine known as IL-1 beta and this IL-1 beta can transmit signals to the brain. The brain then induces this loss of appetite and causes this anorexic response. So the salmonella basically inhibits this process or slows down this process from occurring. Typically, we, we think that by losing appetite and eating less, we actually save energy to be allocated towards the immune response and fighting or resisting the pathogen. Um, but here, we're finding that the anorexic response actually changes the behavior of the salmonella because with fewer host nutrients, salmonella then needs to forage for its own nutrient source. And in so doing, it leaves the intestine and goes to other organs of the body. And that's where it becomes more, more virulent. Our study um, shows that um, typically a pathogenic disease-causing bacterium called salmonella has actually evolved ways to keep us healthy. And it does this by um, preventing our anorexic response or our lack of eating during disease. And so by keeping us healthy, Salmonella then has a stable home in which to grow. And it also um, is able to then easier transmit from me to you to a new host. This has a, a number of potentially important implications for human diseases. Um, again, we know that the anorexic response is a very common response in um, infectious diseases in humans and also cancer, uh, inflammatory conditions, the aging population. It's also a very serious um, response or consequence of current medical interventions that we have. For example, chemotherapy causes an anorexic response. Understanding the this gut-brain axis and how this is regulating appetite, it provides us a means where we can go in and manipulate the um, gut-brain circuitry to perhaps inhibit the anorexic response in these um, patient populations. But I think it's also interesting to consider that we can turn this on its flip side and we can actually tune this gut-brain circuitry so that we can um, basically regulate appetite and we can uh, perhaps apply that to metabolic diseases as well. For our study um, in particular, I do think that it suggests that perhaps um, there are simpler ways we can begin to treat certain bacterial infections such as salmonella and perhaps other gut invasive um, bacterial infections rather than throwing many types of antibiotics at the patients and running the risk of driving antibiotic resistance in these pathogen populations, we can provide nutritional intervention to the patients and that will enable their bodies to survive and eventually fight off the infection on their own.